Yes, PC gamers, as you have probably just seen, this one runs really well for me. And I must say, it seems to run really well for a lot of people in the PC gaming scene. So, fingers crossed, this is across the board and all is good. Well, the Xbox One X version also looks fantastic. I've been playing a ton of it over there and HDR is fantastic. Now, the reason I stress that point is, you guessed it, it's the one and only problem I've currently got. HDR on PC, again, doesn't seem to be working correctly. At the moment, I'm on my ultra-wide monitor. The game looks fabulous, runs really well. 60 frames per second, brilliant. Plugging into 4K, 4K TV with HDR? No, not happening. So that's either specific to myself or it's a widespread problem. PC and HDR seems to be a problem anyway on whatever game you play pretty much for a lot of people. So there's clearly, there's clearly work to be done. But anyway, on to the actual core of this video, we are looking at all the settings and options that the game has to offer, all the tweakability. If you've had Forza Horizon 3, uh, it's a very, very similar uh, setup. It sort of adapts everything to keep the game's performance constant, which is a good thing. It does a very good job of it this time. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at what options you PC guys have got to play around with. Now when you start the game up, it is going to auto detect your system. Um, it's done a perfect job on mine to be fair, apart from it's gone to a normal 16 by 9 monitor screen instead of filling the ultra wide display. So it's detected everything at high for myself, 60 frames per second look, not 30 which is very nice. And this is on a GTX 1060 6GB, it's the ROG edition so it's got the factory overclock for the gaming. And the game is installed on an SSD. Now Windows 10 Pro is also installed on another SSD. And I'm recording using the Nvidia Shadow Plate onto another SSD. So it shouldn't have had any impact on the game or very minimal anyway. Now it is important in my opinion to install this game on an SSD. I tried it on a 7200 speed normal hard drive and I must admit the load times were a bit long. You could sometimes tell it was streaming in textures. So if you've got the option for SSD, I highly recommend you take it. It's not critical, but it really does help. So, options wise, we start at audio, because we'll do the smaller ones first. Now, the game for me seems to be stereo. I have hooked it up to a 5.1 surround system and it was just playing stereo. So if you've got your 7.1, 5.1, Dolby, whatever, it appears to be stereo. It's good stereo, but that's all it is, nothing more. Now you've got presets, you've got midnight there, you've got music, car, etc. Leave it on default. And these are all your options that you've got. You can toggle certain stuff on and off, and we've got microphone on and off, and streamer mode there as well, which I will be testing at a later date. So we'll see what that one does. I'll do some streaming with it, see what happens, see, see how good it is as well at streaming, because you know, unless you're running dedicated stream deck and stuff, streaming is pretty taxing on the hardware, so We'll see how that goes. I'll have, a, I'll have a crack at it one day. So, going back, we have controls. Now, yeah, it doesn't play very well on keyboard. I've tried it. It plays really nice on controller, obviously, because it's designed for the Xbox One. So that makes sense, doesn't it? Personally, I prefer playing it on controller. I can't test steering wheel for you at the moment. Mine is non-functional. It is dead. I don't know why it's dead, but it has packed up. I think the last time I used it was Project Cars, so whatever's happened in, in between there, I don't know. But sadly, I'll try it. So, controller layout, you have default one here, and these are all your buttons. You can redefine all of the buttons. I'll scroll down to the bottom slowly. Feel free to pause the video, obviously, if you want to look at these in detail. Try not to go too fast. But like I say, you can redefine every single one of them. All the way to... The last one, the bottom. You can turn the radio off, uh, but you won't be able to do it until you've got past the intro, which is a bit weird. I tried to turn the radio off like on Forza Horizon 3 right at the very start. Wouldn't let me do it. You have to wait until you've gone into the actual game through all the first section. Uh, so there's your controller one, as it were. What else have we got? There's two. It just redefines everything, basically. Like I say, I'll pause the video if you want to look at controller two options there. 
but you will change them to your own you know, preference. Personally, I find the default number one is fine. But hey, you know. Yes, there's a drone mode, so yes, you can take photos and they look really good, and you can alter all the focus depth and all the rest of it, just like in the older one. Um, really nice, look really good, really good looking game to take photos of. There's number four, there's loads of like defaults, like I was saying. You will have to pause the video. I know I'm rushing through this a bit. I don't want the video to drag on forever in a day. It's only an options video. Five. You, you get the gist. Yeah, there's a lot. Non assigned there for everything. There we go. Six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> yeah, it sort of goes on and 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 on. There's custom ones there as well, look. So you've got five custom ones. Anyway, moving on. Uh, continue with that saving. There's your keyboard, default, normal keys. I've tried it, I don't like playing it on keyboard. You may well like it, but it just doesn't feel right. Sorry, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And then you've got those. And those. Go back to that one, I didn't show the bottom half. There we go. Da -da 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 -da. We'll be doing graphics last, so feel free to skip forward to the graphics section if that's what you're here for, so we can tweak. The answer is everything. And wheel, like I say, I uh, can't do any of that, unfortunately. There we go. Right, let's go back. Video. Now, the benchmark does take two or three minutes to run, so I won't be running this this time for you. It's too long. -winded. But here we go. Dynamic optimization. When it's on, it grays out advanced settings. Bear that in mind, okay? Now, personally, I'd leave it on because it seems to do a really, really good job. Dynamic render there is set to high as default for myself. There is ultra as well. Pretty taxing. Uh, high, I was getting, well, as you probably saw, 80, 90% GPU usage. Equal loading across the CPU cores, approximately 60% across all the different cores. But you've got to bear in mind, this is designed for a console with a netbook CPU, an old netbook CPU, an eight core, so it's never going to tax anything remotely modern. This is an old FX8350 running at 4.4, so although 8 core it's a, an older CPU now, and uh, you guys with your new horizons and Intel, you should freeze this to be fair, you shouldn't really have enough, a problem at all. Like I say, the key thing really is trying to keep it on something fast like an SSD. Resolution uh, will vary on your monitor, like I said, I plugged it in a 4K telly, it will recognise that, no problem. Your common ones are here, we've got 900p there, look, we've got... So 720, there's 720p. Goes down to 1024768 on myself, but like I say, it depends on your monitor. Uh, you got 30 FPS lock. This is the weird one. 20 FPS lock, that cinematic feeling. Yeah, it's crap. Don't bother with that. Stick to 30, 60 if you can. Uh, the consoles are 30 in. 4K for the X and 60 at 1080p for the X. The Xbox One S, obviously 1080p 30. Yeah. Right, V-Sync, vertical synchronization is on and off. There's no half measure on that one. Uh, full screen, yeah, you got your normal, you got full screen, borderless, and windowed. Subtitles on and off. Brightness setting there for you. What else we got? Colorblind, show FPS. Obviously not got that on, don't need it. Running the full display here for you on the left. And motion blur, we have short, long, zoom on, zoom on, off, there we go. User interface scale and follow camera FOV. Now all these FOVs for the cameras, if you widen them up and make them bigger, you are taxing the GPU a bit more. So just bear that in mind because you're pushing more of the active scenario into view. So just bear that one in mind. Quite a nice setting as it is. The devs have done a pretty good job there in my opinion. So, if we turn this off, go advanced. Yes, this may diversely affect performance. And the warning is true. I tried it. I cranked the preset straight up to ultra and tried it. Nah, not good. Spiky frame rate all over the place. So, anastropic filtering. I'll go through all of these for you. Some stop at medium. So we go from medium to ultra instead of low to I don't know, high. This doesn't make sense to me, but I suppose they know what they're doing. Night shadows on and off. 
shadow quality again. Do we go to yeah? We go extreme, and then we go down to low and off. And we got motion blur. We got high, ultra, normal, and low. Environment texture again: ultra high, medium, low. And we got static geometry quality there. Maximum being uh, ultra goes down to very low. There we go. Dynamic geometry quality. Now this one has the extreme setting, and that does seem to be really taxing. I gave that a quick try, and it is pretty taxing. That one. The consoles, such as the Xbox One X, from what I can gather, looking at them, pausing them, comparisons, etc., seems to be running a combination of medium and high on a couple of the settings. Now, I'm sure some of the uh, more technical YouTube channels will actually properly analyse it, but looking at it myself, yeah, it appears to be a mixture of medium and high. So, but the X is running it at native 4K, so pretty good. Not bad at all. But here we go, we're on PC, so let's carry on. MSAA, we got off two, four, eight. There you go, that's it. Top, top dollar there. FXAA, on and off, simple enough. SSAO, we start at ultra and we go all the way down to off, so medium. Medium is your low setting again. I don't get that. Weird. Reflection quality goes up to ultra and all the way down to very low. Can't work these guys out, can you really? Window screen, windshield, sorry. Reflection quality tops out at ultra, goes down to medium. Ah. What else have we got? Mirror quality, this is quite taxing, so if your GPU is struggling a bit, you might want to drop this down a peg or two. Uh, I've noticed this does have an impact, so good tip. Well, on a similar spec system, maybe. I mean, you guys running. Your new, soon to be outdated 1080 Ti is probably going to breeze all these settings easily enough, not a problem. Um, we're all waiting for the ray tracing cards, I suppose. However, whether or not they're going to be another hairworks fiasco, who knows? I guess we'll see. I drift off topic. So, world car level of detail. We're on ultra, there is an extreme there. There we go, all the way to low. Deformable terrain quality, again there's an extreme on that one. Can we go all the way down to medium and then off? Yeah. Screen space reflection quality, ultra is the top setting. We go to high, medium, low, off. Lens effects, ultra, high, medium, and off. Shader quality, ultra, high, medium, low. And particle effects quality. High is your top setting on this particular one. Medium, low, that's it. Literally, that's it. There's no off, so uh, there you go. Let's go back. No, we don't want to save. Thank you very much. And then, like I say, you've got the little in game bits and bobs. Now, as you can see, the, 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 the little intro bit here isn't filling the screen. When you go into game, though, it sort of zooms it up and, and fills the screen. But it is a really good looking game. Now the in-game part, uh, when you press escape or your three line button on your controller, does have a few more bits and bobs regarding settings and options. Now you've got your difficulty settings and there's quite a lot to them as you can see. Now your average difficulty here starts at new racer, yeah? this is your overall grading. We have inexperienced, average, above average, highly skilled, expert, pro and unbeatable so there's a big range then you'll notice the uh, difficulty bonus credit there increases with each stage um, it starts you on average which is fair enough really if you played a Forza game before and you were, you were okay at it you probably want to crank that up a level or two now driving assist difficulty you can you can do the toggle them all at once sort of thing across the board here so if we're on medium there look hard pro insane Love some of these titles but there you go um, braking we have ABS on, ABS off, assisted. Now assisted will literally slow you down when you come to a corner. Mm, you might want to turn that off once you've had a bit of a practice. Steering again we've got normal simulation uh, and assisted. Traction control on, off, straightforward one isn't it, that one. Stability control on and off and shifting, your automatic or manual gears and manual with clutch. Now they take a bit of practice, so if you're new to this, stick with automatic. Driving line full, braking only or off. 
damage and tire wear cosmetic and simulation if you have it on simulation and you crash and break your steering your car will not turn it's as simple as that so i would probably stick to cosmetic until you get used to it a bit and rewind if you screw up you can rewind if you turn that off you can't yeah saves you redoing the whole race look at it that way so going back uh, what else have we got controller settings yeah well we went through all this before and i don't think there's anything different no there isn't good what else have we got um difficulties we've done all that so i think oh we've got hood and gameplay yeah there we go so camera view you can change this in game obviously it's your bumper button on your controller but um chase far chase near driver cockpit hood hood really nice for the engine noise gives you a really good noise you can hear the engine really clearly i like that version bumper and yep back to normal exterior view i suppose map on and off and then all your other bits and bobs can be toggled on and off as well speedometer goes from digital to analog and units of course you can change metric english default etc ghosts on and off loads of bits and bobs there let's go to the bottom and change all these there we go what else have we got anything 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 select your name that's it so you can go back to the world of map, which it is. Guys, that concludes this video. Hopefully it was some help for some of you. If you don't want to download all these gigabytes and waste your bandwidth, at least it shows you what options are available on the PC version. Hopefully it runs well for you. It certainly does for me. And remember, if you've got Game Pass, this game will be included day one. So you won't have to buy it. You can just download it and play it straight away if you've got Xbox Game Pass. And bearing in mind, if you've never had it before, you can normally get it for like a quid, a pound, so, yeah, free game, pretty much, if you want to play, play it for a month on the cheap and try it out. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll catch you again next time, goodbye.